Welcome to my channel, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. The news breaks, sudden, electrifying and impossible to ignore. Like a thunderclap echoing across the archipelago, the story rips through the calm, sending shockwaves from Luzon to Mindanao. Urgent headlines flash across screens in Manila, Cebu and Davao, tensions flare at Reed Bank, Chinese Coast Guard confronts Filipino vessel. The words are bold, the tone urgent and the impact immediate. Grainy mobile footage, hastily captured by trembling hands, shows a massive Chinese ship looming over a small Filipino fishing boat, the waves churning with tension. The size difference is staggering, a modern-day David and Goliath on the high seas, a confrontation that feels both ancient and alarmingly new. Suddenly, a water cannon roars to life, slamming into the smaller vessel, sending its crew scrambling for cover as the sea erupts around them. This is not a distant conflict, not a story from far-off lands. It's happening now, in waters the Philippines claims as its own, waters that have fed generations. The story dominates every news cycle, splashed across front pages, trending on social media, and debated in every corner of the country. In the capital, government officials hold emergency press conferences, condemning the aggression, vowing to defend their people, and calling for unity in the face of adversity. On the streets, anger and anxiety mix as people gather around storefront TVs, their faces lit by the flickering images of confrontation and hope. The South China Sea is no longer just a geography lesson, it's a raw, open wound, a place where history, pride and survival collide. This incident is more than a clash, it's a flashpoint in a decades-long struggle, a new chapter in a story that refuses to end. The tension is palpable a heavy blanket of uncertainty settling over the nation, as if the very air is charged with worry and anticipation. Every Filipino, from the highest official in government to the simplest villager by the sea, understands what's at risk, livelihoods, sovereignty, and dignity. This is about more than fishing rights or territorial lines, it's about the nation's future, the dreams of children, and the memories of elders who have always called these waters home. The world is watching. Images of a tattered Filipino flag whipping in the wind become a symbol of resilience, defiance and hope in the face of overwhelming odds. Analysts draw maps, circling disputed areas, debating exclusive economic zones and the infamous nine-dash line as the world tries to make sense of the chaos. For Filipinos, this is not an abstract debate, it's a direct challenge to their national identity, a test of unity and resolve that reaches into every home and heart. The confrontation at sea is a stark reminder, the nation's security and prosperity hang in the balance, threatened by forces far larger than any single boat. The visuals are powerful and broadcast globally, turning a local struggle into an international flashpoint, with the world's eyes fixed on the Philippines. The fishermen's faces, frightened, defiant, become the face of the nation, embodying both its vulnerability and its unbreakable spirit. The stakes are enormous, and the world is watching, waiting to see how this small nation will respond to a giant's challenge. The nation braces for what comes next, united in uncertainty, but determined to stand together, whatever the future may hold. For Palawan's fishermen, Reed Bank is not just a distant geopolitical concept, it's their ancestral fishing ground, the heart of their community, and the source of their daily bread. Generations have depended on these waters, passing down knowledge and tradition from father to son. Men like Roberto Aces have sailed these waters for decades, guided by the stars and the tides, but now they face a new, man-made danger that threatens not only their way of life, but their very identity as fishermen. Every voyage is a gamble, a test of courage and endurance against both nature and man. They're chased, blocked and harassed by Chinese vessels, forced to navigate not just the unpredictable sea, but also the unpredictable actions of foreign patrols. The sound of horns, the sight of armed guards, the constant threat of having their nets cut or their hard-earned catch stolen. These are daily realities that haunt every trip. Forced to stay in overfished waters near shore, their incomes plummet and families suffer. The risk is immense, and the uncertainty grows with each passing day. A trip to the Spratleys can take days, with the shadow of the Chinese maritime militia looming over every horizon, making each journey a leap of faith. The psychological toll is heavy, wearing down even the most seasoned fishermen, but they keep sailing, out of necessity, out of pride, and out of love for their families. Their simple wooden boats, battered by years of use, have become symbols of Philippine sovereignty and the unbreakable will of those who depend on the sea. 
This daily struggle is the human face of the South China Sea dispute, a story of ordinary people caught in extraordinary circumstances. It's not about legal arguments or distant diplomacy. It's about fathers trying to feed their families, mothers waiting anxiously, and children hoping for their safe return. These fishermen are on the front lines, unwilling pawns in a high-stakes game of nations, risking everything for a chance at survival. Their resilience is a testament to the Filipino spirit, a refusal to be bullied out of what is rightfully theirs, and a determination to stand together in the face of adversity. Their fight is the nation's fight, a struggle that unites communities and inspires hope across the islands. Each journey is an act of defiance, a statement that they will not be driven away from their own seas. The world may see politics and power plays, they see survival, dignity, and the daily struggle to provide. Their courage keeps hope alive, lighting the way for future generations who may one day fish these same waters in peace. The battle for Reed Bank is fought every single day in every cast net, every anxious glance at the horizon and every homecoming at dusk. Beneath the West Philippine Sea lies a treasure, billions of barrels of oil and trillions of cubic feet of natural gas. For the Philippines this is more than a resource, it's a potential game-changer. The Malampaya gas field is running out, threatening an energy crisis. But the West Philippine Sea could power the country for decades, ending blackouts and fueling growth. Developing these resources would create thousands of jobs and billions in government revenue. This could fund highways, schools, healthcare and lift millions from poverty. The cycle of dependence on overseas workers could finally be broken. This is the promise just beyond the horizon a stronger, more self-reliant Philippines. The fight for the West Philippine Sea is a fight for the nation's destiny. It's about more than territory, it's about the future. The treasure is there, waiting to be claimed. The stakes could not be higher. If this immense wealth truly exists beneath the waves, why does it remain untouched, locked away from those who need it most? The answer is more complex than it first appears. The main reason is relentless pressure and intimidation from China, which has transformed the region into a tense, geopolitical hotspot. China claims nearly the entire South China Sea as its own, deploying a formidable presence of Coast Guard and naval vessels to enforce its sweeping claim, often disregarding international boundaries. Any attempt by the Philippines to explore, survey, or drill for resources is met with immediate, aggressive interference, sometimes dangerously close encounters at sea. This ongoing intimidation scares off international investors and energy companies, leaving the Philippines without the capital, expertise, or advanced technology needed to develop these vast resources on its own. In 2016, the Hague Tribunal ruled decisively in favor of the Philippines, invalidating China's sweeping claims under international law. Yet, China simply rejected the ruling and continued its activities. The court, unfortunately, has no real power to enforce its decision leaving the verdict as little more than a moral victory. So, while the Philippines holds the legal title to these waters and their riches, China remains physically present, refusing to leave or even acknowledge the ruling. Successive Philippine governments have tried diplomacy, negotiation and public protest, but the tense standoff continues, with no clear resolution in sight. The legal victory is real and significant, but for now, the treasure beneath the sea remains frustratingly out of reach for the Filipino people. As the years pass, frustration only grows, with dreams of prosperity and national progress sitting idle beneath contested waves just beyond grasp. The nation waits, holding on to hope, for a breakthrough that will finally unlock the promise of the South China Sea. Energy insecurity is not abstract, it's felt in every Filipino home. Dependence on imports means higher bills, rising food prices, and a hidden tax on the poor. The sight of Chinese ships blocking access to resources is a blow to national pride. Small businesses suffer from unreliable power, stifling growth and opportunity. The quest for energy independence is a quest for dignity and self-respect. Fishermen fighting for their catch mirror the nation's struggle for its own resources. Both are fighting for survival and the right to benefit from what is theirs. The cost is paid in lost opportunity and pride. The fight for energy is the fight for the nation's future. Imagine a Philippines powered by its own natural gas. Brownouts end. Lights stay on in homes, schools and hospitals. Factories run extra shifts, creating jobs and attracting investment. Young graduates find opportunities at home, not just abroad. Billions in new revenue fund modern schools, hospitals and infrastructure. The military grows stronger, able to defend the nation's rights. This is not fantasy, it's the outcome of harnessing natural wealth. 
Energy independence means negotiating from strength, not desperation. The nation stands taller, proud, and empowered. This is the dream that fuels the fight for the West Philippine Sea. The benefits ripple through every sector. The future is within reach. The dream is worth fighting for. Today the Philippines is chained to imported fossil fuels. Global crises send oil prices soaring, draining the nation's wealth. Electricity prices are among the highest in Southeast Asia, burdening families and businesses. Reliance on coal pollutes the air and harms public health. Tapping domestic natural gas would cut costs and emissions and build a bridge to renewables. Dependence creates a strategic vulnerability. A blockade could cripple the nation in weeks. This is not hypothetical, it's a real danger. The price of inaction is lost wealth, lost opportunity and compromised security. The nation is held hostage by its own energy needs. The solution lies beneath its own seas. The Philippines need only look to its neighbors for inspiration. Malaysia and Indonesia have developed their offshore resources standing firm against pressure. Malaysia's Petronas has made the country a global energy player, funding massive development. Indonesia defends its rights around the Natuna Islands, partnering with international firms. Their success shows that political will and strategic investment can overcome challenges. The Philippines has missed opportunities, but the path is not closed. The comparison is a call to action. The nation can still choose a new, assertive approach. The potential is waiting to be unlocked. The time for indecision is over. The Malampaya gas field is running dry, an energy crisis looms. The nation must act now, develop the West Philippine Sea's resources with clear, courageous policy strengthen alliances, attract investment, and assert rights under international law. Use the wealth from oil and gas to fund a transition to renewables, solar, wind, geothermal. Secure energy for today, and build a sustainable system for tomorrow. This is a call for bold, forward-thinking leadership. The cost of inaction is far greater than the risks of action. The nation's stability, security, and dignity depend on choices made now. The 11th hour is here. The future is in the nation's hands, it is time to act. The dream of a sovereign prosperous Philippines is within reach. 